Hello reformers and welcome back to Shadow of War. Now when we left off we had just done quite a bit of the fight pits events and I'm still doing that as you can see. We're currently embroiled in a, a fight at the moment between Prak Darkstalker and one of the mystic legendary cursed warmongers which is right over there. And I'm always say I'm actually kind of surprised that Prak lost that because he was winning. He was actually winning the entire time. So I'm very surprised. And now this guy's enraged, which is even more unfortunate, because now it means I cannot easily dominate him. Oh, there we go. Now that's nice. If I do say so myself, we're able to gain a cursed mystic destroyer legendary. Just like that. Isn't that amazing? That's really, really cool. So I think actually what would be a really good way of getting extremely good orcs is literally to do the champion fight pits in Nernan, at least in Nernan, and have one of the higher level orcs kill one of your lower level ones pretty easily, and then you can gain one of these guys. I mean, this guy's immune to curse. He's actually not that good. So technically, I could select someone that could quite easily beat him. Like, for example, uh, uh, quite easily beat him. Huh, yes. Um, hmm, who's that going to be? <laughs> uh, what about Ukbuk? Ukbuk might be able to beat him. Let's see if that works. I mean, if it doesn't work, then at least we've gotten someone that is a little bit stronger. And then we can continue to kind of recycle them, if you know what I mean. So we can kind of like send a weaker one against a stronger one and then dominate the stronger one and then so on and so forth. And that eventually will become very, very strong. You know, our defense will become extremely strong. I'm not sending the orcs that are actually, shall we say, sentimental to us, me, you, whatever, into the fight pit because I don't know what could necessarily happen. Most of the time you're going to end up with maybe losing your, your favorite orc. I, I don't really want to send Nakra in here, for example. I mean, yes, I personally feel like Nakra, the tower, that is, would most likely be able to win against basically anyone. But he has had his close calls in the past. And I don't really want to risk it, to be honest, because he's been with us since level 18, maybe level 20, and I don't really want to see him die. So we're going to do everything in our power to make sure that he lives by not sending him into the fight pits. And there you go. So Ulrek, Ulrok, yes, not Ulrek, Olnek, <laughs> Olnek Snapper, hmm, yes. Uh, yes. So anyway, this guy is now broken. He, he's maybe going to die from the other fellows around here, but hopefully not. There we go, and we got him. So it's actually really quite easy to get some pretty decently leveled orcs. Now, do bear in mind that I'm only level 48. I could be much higher at this point. But I didn't really take advantage of the experience boosts because I don't really have a lot of time to play and I can't play for two hours straight. I can I can just about stretch maybe 30 minutes, 45 minutes, but that's basically it. So that's a bit of a shame. But anyway, let's go and defend the keep in Nernan. All right, here it is, the Siege of Shark Burrs. And yeah, what we're going to need to do is a little bit of jiggery-pokery, shall we say. So we need to upgrade the fortress by giving ourselves a couple more war chiefs and as you can see my levels are decent not exactly fantastic but they are okay let's assign this guy to the defense and we'll assign someone else just so that we can have that additional help i guess i'm going to i'm going to put luga in there because he's an epic and i think he could be pretty good and let's go for some fire mines this time around and we're going to go for Farsight Archers. And we're going to go for the Caged Drakes, Cursed Siege Beasts, Savage Hosts, Iron Gates. And we also have Metal Walls that I actually purchased a long time ago. So this is going to be pretty crazy. What do they have? They have Mounted Cavalry, Defender Hosts, Poisonous Siege Beasts, Wild Drakes, Mounted Archers, and Attacking Orcs Capture Victory Points much faster. 
that's not very nice. All right, so we are ready to go. This is going to be interesting because this is a little bit more towards our level because the previous sieges. Oh, Nakra the Tyrant! Let me get let me get one of those. Ha ha! Hello there, Nakra the Tyrant. I am I'm ready for you. I would very much like to have you on my. Oh dear. I'd very much like to have you on my team, if I can. That would be nice. There we go. I'm just going to dominate one of their Karagors because I can, and then I'm going to attack this fellow because I can as well. There we are. Alright, so there's actually a Graug behind us. No, don't talk to me! Oh! Oh, he's retreating. Yes. Nakra, you're mine. You're mine. You can't, you can't escape. You can't escape, Nakra. You are mine. You cannot leave. <laughs> Every single Nakra I'm going to try and get. I'm literally going to make a Nakra fort where there are only people called Nakra because that just seems like a pretty fantastic idea to me. Anyway, let us dominate this fellow. He's a Marauder Trickster, so he's not actually that good in many respects, but I'm happy to I'm happy to take him because he's a Nakra. And unfortunately, I was unable to get the uh, Graug before it was ah here we go here we go yes I have a I have a siege beast this is nice okay I'm going to be using it to bombard these guys yes bombard them quickly do it yes take that yes and I'm going to I'm gonna get off now There we are. Okay, so this guy's enraged. I don't know why. He, I, I, I don't know what he's enraged from. Is he actually? Wow, they haven't even breached the walls. No, they haven't even breached the walls. I don't think. Cough, good think. Okay, very, very well. Okay, so this guy is gonna be pretty tricky. I feel he seems to be immune to quite a few things. And it seems like he has uh, annoying friends. Very annoying friends. Okay, there we go. He's no longer enraged, so I should be able to dominate him just in a little second. There we go. Maybe now. Yeah, there we are. I actually really like the hammer weapon. I've never used the hammer before, so I guess it's my own fault for not really knowing about it. But it's pretty cool to see it in action. Alright, so we're just going to... Tell them to tell him to stay and fight. They haven't gotten through the they haven't gotten through the gates. They literally haven't gotten through the gates. And there's actually someone someone's loot here that I'd like to get. Hello. Bulg. The unbreakable. Yes. Alright, who's this? All these globes around and I have to Ulrock. Oh, Ulrock Kingslayer, and he's a marauder destroyer. Okay. I'm happy to uh, make your acquaintance. Uh, he is frostproof, however, so this is going to be a bit annoying, but nothing I can't handle, I suppose. Right? Yes? No? Uh, probably not. He's arrowproof as well. That's not very good. It's going to take me a bit of time to kill him then, because he actually has some pretty decent abilities to enable him to avoid my attacks quite well, actually. Now I'm going to try and execute him if I can. There we go, yes. Yes. <gasps> He's terrified of executions! Oh, that's fantastic! Come to me! Yes. Ulrock Kingslayer. Ugh. That is a pretty glaring weakness to have, I gotta say. Anyway, stay and fight for me. Alright, defeat the next wave. 41, 34, and 37. And we're getting some pretty nice experience on the ground here as well, so... I don't know, I mean... I, I, think, I think some of you have actually said that allowing one of these things to be taken and then taking it back is actually better than defending it in terms of experience? And I gotta say, isn't that counterintuitive? Why would they, de why would they design it like that? Well, I guess they might. I mean, yeah considering the publisher and everything. Whoa, Maku the Ruinous. Look at how cool he looks. He's very, very, shall we say, um, <laughs> very scary. Very scary indeed. But he's going to be ours soon. In a second. 
Yeah, there we go. Join us. That is what we like. Now I'll serve the bright lord. The bright lord. There we go. Nice. Okay, so you can join me. This guy's dazed. It seems like they all have weaknesses that we have countered directly, which is kind of amazing in itself. Kind of surprised about that. Maybe if we can just continue to deal some pretty nice damage against this guy, then we'll be able to dominate him too. He's still dazed though. Still dazed? That's crazy. Okay, who's this? Cougar the Legend, and he is a legendary Marauder Slayer, okay. Well, where's the other fellow? The other fellow is still dazed. I'd like to do something with him, if at all possible. Hey, could you just leave me alone? Thank you. Oh, am I dead? No, oh, no, I, just <laughs> I thought to myself, I'm dead. No, I'm not actually dead. I'm just a little bit dazed from one of their hits. Okay, hopefully I can kill this guy soon. There we go, there we go. Domination. Wow, I gotta say, most of these are probably a really good way to just get more orcs. Isn't that, isn't that what's happening right here? Because we seem to be getting so many orcs from this particular event. Which is kind of strange in itself, because Sauron is basically just sending orcs for us to convert. I find it a bit weird, though, that we still have the domination mechanic, because obviously Celebrimbor is no longer with us. Oh, victory! Oh, that was... That was good. Uh, yeah, so Celebrimbor is no longer with us, but obviously we have Isildur's ring, and that enables us to get undead Gondorian soldiers to help us out, of course. But I don't know about the conversion thing of orcs. I mean, maybe he's just got some latent power? From somewhere else, perhaps? Anyway. That's pretty good. That is that is quite nice. Region has been defended, and Shadow Wars Stage 2 has been completed. And I suppose... Ah, that's going to give me another skill point. Thank you very much for that, even though I, I, I personally don't feel like I need skill points anymore, but I suppose that's fine. And now this is Stage 3, so we're going to go to Saragost here. Now, Saragost has one of... Well, one of many of my favorite orcs here. And I think you may know who that is. It's Ushak, the Unashamed. If you've seen the entirety of the series thus far, then you will know that uh, <laughs> you'll know who he is. Yes, you will. All right. So, are we done here? I guess we're done here. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. So, let's go to the world map. And I'm going to go over to Saragost and take a quick look and see what's going on there, because there's Ushak, the Unashamed. He's one of the most powerful orcs that I've seen so far, with the exception, obviously, of Nakra the Tower and a variety of other ones that rely on Enrage mechanics. Personally, I feel like the Enrage mechanic is very powerful indeed, and usually results in orcs being able to kill basically anything. And Ushak is very, very good at what he does. So, let's actually just take a quick look at him, because he is our overlord right now. I don't know whether we can... Can we tell him to go somewhere else? Yes, we can. Oh, fantastic. So, I'm going to take Ushak down, and we're going to take him into the fight pits. The lowest level fight pits, of course. And should I give him some training orders? Maybe I should give him some training orders. Fire damage. What? What is he? What? Are, what are his stats currently? Let's take a quick look. Okay. So. Whoa. Okay. So he's a soft target. He's heavily damaged by poison, and he's heavily damaged by beast. He is immune to frost, but that's not really going to make any difference to anything else. He's enraged by injury. He has bestial frenzy. He becomes enraged when captains or higher rank orcs become dazed or flee, and becomes enraged at the sight of drakes. He is pretty amazing. He has epic rage and great strength too. So if we can get him into a training, in a, into a fight pit, it's going to be absolutely fantastic. Alright, so let's see how Ushak actually does in this fight pit. We've seen that this guy is level 27, so he should have a pretty decent shot at beating him. 
It is a 27 against the 26. And Ushak, as we know, is just absolutely amazing. So let's see how it goes. This guy is a warmonger assassin. The Grave Walker tried to shame me, but I embraced the mark and added many others. Now I stand before you not with shame, but pride. Yes, exactly. That is exactly what happened. We do have a bit of a history with Ushak, but as you can see, he's... What? Oh my... Oh, okay. Never mind. He's dead. You got him. That was literally under... What? Under 12 seconds? And he did it. <laughs> what? Okay. And he killed the guy with a grenade or something very similar to that. And now there are all kinds of body parts just flying all over the place. Okay. So Ushak, definitely not someone to be messed with. Okay, so let's let's see how he does against this guy then. Is this guy immune to fire? No, he's not immune to fire. So he should have a pretty good shot at beating him as well. I am... Very impressed. Good work, Ushak. You are absolutely beastly. Really. I mean, I I don't even know. Okay, let's do it. Let's see how he does against an Olog. I mean, that guy didn't even know what hit him. I think that was probably one of the quickest fights that we've ever seen. You know me. You know that I am unashamed. I bear my marks with pride. Not even the Gravewalker himself could shame me! And that is the reason why he's so powerful. He's already enraged! Look at that! He is already enraged and he's going to be using that enrage for a very, very long time. And it's... I'm gonna be surprised if we don't see a victory in the next, I don't know, 20 seconds. So let's say by the 2 minutes and 20 mark, he's already achieved victory. Never mind. It's a lot quicker than that. Two minutes and 34, actually. So six seconds from when I said that, and he had already won. Uh-huh. That is pretty impressive, if I say so myself. Okay, so let's have a look. And this is... Oh, this is the champion one. I don't really want to go to the champion one just yet. I feel like that might be a bit much. Because that's probably going to be a level 40-something. And he's level 36 now, isn't he? Or something like that? Okay, so who, what, what level is this fellow? 37. Is he immune to fire? He's not immune to fire, so I guess... <laughs> I guess this means that Ushak is going to win again. Let's see. He's 34 now, actually. Never mind. thought he was 36. Okay, so let's see how he does with this guy. He's got a pretty similar style to him. Wow, okay. I I don't even know, really, who could win. I mean, I think, actually, Ushak might be able to beat Nakra the Tower. Just because of the additional enrage mechanics. If Nakra had the same stats that this guy does, then I think that Nakra would probably win. But you can see, as soon as he becomes enraged, you cannot stop him. And he just kills you, like that. Boom. Easy. <laughs> wow. I, I I made a good choice when I made him my overlord, that is for sure. That is for sure. Okay, so let's do one more. If this guy's immune to fire... Oh, okay, I'm not going to do that one then, apparently. <laughs> We're going to go down and do the champion one instead then. There we go. Okay, let's see what level this guy is. Is he immune to fire? No, he's beast proof. He's enraged by stealth, enraged by mortal wounds, he's vengeful as well, he has furious charge. He does have a flame weapon, but I don't think that should make too much difference. He is level 47. But I am willing to bet that Ushak at level 39 will be able to beat a level 47 enemy. Now you face a true follower of the and if he does frame. die, then that is on me. And then I'm going to be really sad, but I think, and I know that Ushak has a huge amount of fight in him, and I don't think he's actually going to be even close to perishing. So let's just see how that goes. I mean, he's already dealt a massive blow to it. Look at him! He's... He just killed a level 47 without taking any damage. Uh, okay. 
Right. I have no idea. Who can beat this guy? I have no idea. I mean, he has... As I've, as I've shown you, he has extremely amazing skills. So, I guess... I, I have no idea. He is amazing. Okay, so shall we just take a look? He's lost his sickly vulnerability now, which is good. So that means he's less vulnerable against poison. And he has he has Beast Slayer. He's got two epic traits. He's just wow. He's actually he's even gained something. He's enraged by Karagors as well now. So I don't even know. Anyway, that will be it for this episode. I'm going to be spending a little bit of time off screen, just leveling up a couple of these guys. I, as far as I'm aware, Ul Ulgol or Yugol the clever was actually pretty cool too. And um, yeah, I guess I'll see you. In the next episode for the defense of Saragost, I thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time.